what's going on you guys it's Kevin the Full Metal Ginger uh, got another collection update for you today um, got a nice mix of some older bands and newer bands to look at uh, and a couple of these bands are ones that I've just for whatever reason ignored throughout the years uh, not for any particular reason it's just I've just not gotten around to picking up any of their music uh, so I'm really excited to talk about some of those and uh, I've got some uh, newer black metal uh, a little bit more on the obscure side at least from my understanding I've not really heard anyone talking about them before and uh, yeah, got another you know awesome fucking uh, album from a band that I fucking love. So we'll go ahead and talk, start talking about this. Uh, I am coming down with a bad head cold, so if I start horking loogies and being gross, I apologize. But just warning you, I've been fighting this shit off for a week at least, so bear with me on that. Uh, I'll try not to spit lubes everywhere. Uh, listening to Blood Incantation, Star Spawn. And you guys are going to probably hate me, but I'm just, I'm trying my best to get into this. Um, I don't know, man. Um, I can kind of see why people love this so much, but for me, it's just not really clicking right now. Um, but I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. You know, I'm really trying to absorb it, you know, but I don't know. As of right now, maybe it's just I've not been in the right state of mind so far, but whatever. I'm not saying it's a bad album, but it's just not been clicking with me so far. So let the hate commence, you know. All right, first thing I got for you is a fucking legendary band out of Japan. Uh, absolutely kick-ass band. I uh, love all their work, and it's just one of the bands that I've just not gotten around to up until now. Uh, but this is Abigail with The Final Damnation. This is their newest release, I believe. It's their 2016 full length. So it's not been out all that long, but, I mean, it's some awesome fucking shit, dudes. Um, Japanese legends. And, um... Uh, what can you say about fucking Abigail? The vocals on here are fantastic. I don't know what it is about the Japanese accent that just makes harsh vocals sound even better. I don't know, just trying to pronounce English, it just sounds great when you're doing the harsh vocals. It's fucking killer. Uh, you got the really, you know, the typical harsh stuff, but you got the gurgly shit in there with it. It just sounds fucking epic, man. Um, yeah, and totally influenced by, like, you know, old school speed metal, 80s thrash, uh, which is always present in their work. You know, you got the solos, the speed, the riffage, the blasphemy. And, uh, you know, if you're a fan of fucking Venom or, you know, Midnight or anything along those lines, you'll totally dig this. If you haven't looked at them already, I'm fucking sure that Midnight's taken some influence from this band. Uh, been around a long time, since 92. Um, got quite a, you know, quite a track record of, uh, you know, back releases and all that kind of thing. Fuck, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm struggling. I do love the CD with all the Japanese flags there. But yeah, man, like I said, Venom, Midnight, Sodom, anything of that nature, this is absolutely required listening. It's it's thrashy, it's got the black evil edge to it. Um, it's just really energetic, really upbeat, very uh, kick-ass music, man. I absolutely love this. Uh, songs like uh, Whiskey Coca Bitch, that's a great song. Uh, Sex and Metal. Uh, no Pain, No Limit, uh, just a great fucking album all the way through, man. Uh, all their work is fucking fantastic, and it's just a shame, a crying-ass shame that I'm just now getting around to picking up their music, and they're a band I've always followed from afar, and just kind of never got around to picking up anything as a physical copy, you know, man, I'd listen to it on YouTube or whatever, and I gotta pick this up, and it's just a shame that I'm just now getting around to it, but... I mean, it is what it is. Everyone has those bands that they've just not gotten into, or not, you know, got around to picking up anything from them, so. And that's just in, kind of me with this band, but I absolutely love Abigail. Uh, great musicians, uh, great work. Um, I think a lot of the dudes in here are uh, playing in Barbados as well, so that's really cool. Um, I need to pick up some Barbados as well, so. Uh, that's just awesome shit, man. I would definitely need to go back through all their back catalog and pick up some more. Uh, but this is their newest release, Final Damnation. Uh, it's great, man. Like I said, Venom, Midnight, Sodom, uh, Destruction, anything like that, man. Fast, speedy, uh, solos out the ass. You'll dig this, I promise you. If you haven't picked it up yet. It's Abigail, The Final Damnation. And uh, next up, we have another uh, fucking legendary Japanese band. And I don't think I'd even need to tell you who this one is. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you. This is Sabat with Evoke. Uh, this is their 1992 album, I believe. This is the uh, 2016 re-release on Fallen Angels. Um, yeah, man, uh, just what can you fucking say about Sabat? Um, been around a long-ass time, man. Formed in 83 when they were called Evil, and then changed the name to Sabat in around 84, I guess. And um, they kind of came out around the same time that, you know... Venom was sort of starting to gear up really hard. Um, Bathory was really starting to put out some of their classic debuts. And, uh, I mean, 
this being one of their early like full lengths, you can kind of hear the influence of Venom and Bathory in here. I mean, it's very, very apparent, especially on songs like Total Necro. Um, you really kind of hear that. I mean, everything on here is kind of like Venom and Bathory really got together and had sex and made a baby. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fucking killer. The thing I, I think is different and it gives them their own kind of unique sound is that there's a little bit more of a thrash element in there. I mean, you've got the, uh, the punky stuff from Venom and you've got the just heavy downbeat, you know, a, you know, girth of a Bathory song and you just kind of put them together and just fucking, you get Sabat, but just add a little bit more thrash. Uh, yeah, man, um, the only band that I'm aware of, at least, that has more releases than fucking Nun Slaughter, man. These dudes have put out all kinds of fucking music. And uh, what I do like about this is uh, it's got the original album artwork on the CD in here. So that's really nice to see. And it's got it on the uh, uh, the back of the jewel case as well. But yeah, man, uh, you can just, you definitely hear the, uh, the you know, where Bathory and Venom have been putting out some of their more formative albums. And you can kind of tell they're taking the influence there. And again, man, the fucking Japanese vocals, like, trying to, you know, uh, pronounce English, the English language just sounds really fucking sinister when it's coming from some Japanese dudes, especially doing the harsh vocal. And I'm sure Abigail took some fucking influence from them as well, man. Just an absolutely legendary band, and I'm just a fucking shame to myself that I have not gotten around, got around to picking up anything until now. Uh, again, another band I followed from afar, it's just taking me forever to get around to it, but, and there's plenty more, so, you know, it's whatever. And uh, another band that I will never ever own everything they ever had. So, I mean, it's whatever, man. But I absolutely love this, man. Uh, again, if you're a Bathory, Venom fan, anything like that, any like old school 80s speed metal, 80s thrash, uh, a little bit on the, the early black metal, you'll definitely dig this if you haven't picked it up already. And if you don't know, which if you're anything like me, I'm a fucking idiot and just never got around to getting it, man. So... Uh, but it's definitely cool that I've, I have an older release, uh, you know, kind of start at least somewhat towards the beginning. Um, but yeah, man, uh, fucking killer shit. This is Sabat with Evoke. Now this one, uh, Hell's Headbanger sent it to me for free, and I kind of forgot I had it. And I don't really know what to say about this. Um, this came out on Shadow Kingdom in 2015. I mean, it's a band I've seen on there. You know, just, I kind of thought about picking up their shit, but I just never did. Uh, it's just kind of like some weird heavy metal. It's more like a hard rock type of band, but it's it's really relaxing to me. I really enjoy listening to it. This is Corsair with uh, One-Eyed Horse. Um, what I get from it, it's like, uh, especially on the opening track, Shadows from Breath, it's just really like beachy music. It's very laid back. Um, you know, uh, I, I, can't, I can't fucking explain what I think is beachy music. I don't want to say like reggae, but, you know, it's kind of got almost a reggae type of vibe. It's just very laid back. Um, and they just kind of alternate between the really melodic stuff, the uh, really, you know, uh, relaxing type of music and kind of kick into a little bit more heavy stuff. It's almost like doom sounding, but it's not slow enough at all. Um, but man, it's just, it's an interesting release for sure. Uh, definitely not something I listen to very often, you know, in terms of what I normally dig into, but I've, I've been jamming this quite a bit here over the last few weeks. And, uh, yeah, all this stuff has come in. Like I've said in the last video, it's been out, been here for about a month at least, so. Uh, and this is one that's just been kind of making the spins. Um, I'll just leave a link, let you see what you think. Um, I'll leave links for everything as always, but, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm having a hard time explaining, uh, how this really sounds and how it comes off. It's just very laid back, hard rock, I guess is the best explanation I can come up with, um. But yeah, man, uh, just go check them out. Uh, it's definitely something out of the ordinary for all you fucking heavy-minded fucks. But it's it's definitely a really cool listen. It's something to take the edge off, I guess you'd say. But uh, yeah, definitely really cool. It's uh, Corsair, One-Eyed Horse. All right, next up, we're going to go through some cassettes. And uh, this one is one of the ones that's like, okay, yeah, you definitely need to have this. Um, just because of uh, the shit I've been collecting lately. Uh, I'll go ahead and whip this out for you. This is the debut full length from Nun Slaughter, Hell's Unholy Fire. And uh, as of this recording, at least I do have uh, all their full lengths, which I will show you another one here in the next couple videos here soon. Uh, so it's just nice to finally complete that at least because I will never have all their EPs and demos and splits and everything that they've ever put out. 
Um, but yeah, what's crazy, man, is uh, Nunslaughter being around since like 1987 didn't put this out. This is their debut full length. Didn't put this out till 2000. So, what, 13 years of being a band before they put anything full length wise out. Um, I would like to have this on record and CD, but I mean, it's just, I can't find it. Uh, Hell's Headbangers never has it in stock, and I don't think they're ever going to restock it. Um, there's the tapes just on black shell, nothing really major. I'll show you the J Carb, it's just lyrics, I believe. Well, you have an old band photo there. And there are a massive amount of songs, so you've got a massive amount of lyrics. Yeah, man, uh, if you've listened to Nun Slaughter at all, you know what to expect. It's nothing different from anything else they ever do. Uh, this being an older release, it's just a bit more raw, which is fine with me. It just makes it sound all the more sinister. Um, but yeah, man, uh, Nun Slaughter being one of my favorite bands ever, obviously, it's just really fucking cool to start getting, you know, more of their shit in and more of their full lengths. And I'm gonna actually gonna start working on their, um, you know, the splits and everything else I can pick up from them just because it's one of the bands that I just kind of have to have everything. Um, but yeah, man, just pretty, uh, um, traditional songs that they played forever on here. Uh, I Am Death, uh, Death by the Dead, um, Killed by the Cross, they play that one all the time, uh, Nun Slaughter, uh, Inverted Churches, Impale the Soul, uh, you know, uh, just, again, just a little bit more raw than what you hear in their uh, music they're putting out now, but I mean, it's nothing out of the ordinary that you haven't heard from Nun Slaughter, so, uh, fuck yeah, man, really fucking excited and thrilled to have this and have it out of the way and be done with it, so, that was Unholy Fire, man, very fucking stoked to have that one finally. That one's eluded me for the longest time. All right, next up, we're going to move into some, like, uh, newer shit. Um, uh, a little bit more of a you know, raw black metal style, uh, a little bit more obscure bands. I don't really hear anybody talking about these bands. Let me turn this down a little bit, goddamn. I feel like I'm shouting. Uh, this first band is out of France, I believe. No, they're from Finland. And um, first thing you're going to take a gander at is the fucking cover art. I'll just go ahead and show you this. This is uh, Ordnance with Relinquishment. And you've got these dudes sitting around in a circle, catching blood in a vase from a moon vagina. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of whatever. Um, this, what's weird about the cassette version, it's uh, a little bit more faded with the color and everything. See how it's all gray and shit? Like on the CD and the, I think there's a vinyl version, it's a lot more uh, bold, a lot more uh, contrasting. So the blood's almost gray, too. I mean, you could barely tell that it's even red in the first place. But if you get it on any other format, it's the details really pop out a little bit more. Um, the thing about this is it... There's the tape. Uh, it shifts a lot, man. It's It kind of goes between... Um, you know, you got your traditional black metal. It's got your depressive suicidal black metal. It's got, like, epic-sounding black metal. And it just kind of blend all those styles together, and they'll play one riff in a certain style, and then the next riff will be a totally different style. And you would think that would get really convoluted and just sound like a mess, but it really flows very, very well. Um, just a really interesting listen. I've not heard anything that kind of uh, encapsulates all those different styles the way this band does, uh, but it's very, very interesting. It's a great listen. It's one of my favorite black metal albums that I own right now. And, uh, I mean, I don't know, man, What's what the fuck is in the water in Finland putting out such killer fucking black metal? Um, just really awesome shit, man. It's, uh, really cultic, uh, but again, it's nothing really innovative, but it does keep you mesmerized throughout. It's like, okay, what riff, what style are they gonna go to next, you know what I mean? Um, uh, dude, oh, there's another thing, too. Uh, the dude sounds like Attila from fucking Mayhem, and that kind of gives it a little bit more of an edge, because it's a little bit, uh, Earlier. It's not the harsh, like, shrieking type of vocals that's common in black metal. Uh, so you got that aspect. It just makes it a little bit more different. Uh, but yeah, the selling point for me is just the style shifts. Uh, and the fusion is just so seamless and doesn't sound like a big jumbled fucking mess. And it's a really enjoyable listen, man. I highly encourage you all to go check this out. Um, just a fucking fantastic band. And uh, speaking of, it's kind of weird that I play in a uh, fucking blood incantation today, but... God damn it. I always thought their uh, logos looked a little similar. Just a fucking chaotic mess that you can't fucking read at all. But yeah, man. Um, if you like uh, any of those styles of white metal, I for sure you'll fucking dig this. It's uh, Again, it's nothing really fucking crazy and out of the ordinary and nothing really inspiring about it, but I mean, it's 
it'll definitely hook you and uh, all the style shifts are fucking great it's just really cool to fucking hear uh, so yeah man that's ordinance with relinquishment uh, and the last one I have for you is something I've really been digging into lately and um, I've seen I think three of their full lengths just on Hell's Headbangers just kind of flipping around and discovering them and uh, I was like yeah I gotta go back and get all these at some point so I picked up these I believe it's their second full length if I'm not mistaken and I might be wrong about that but this is a uh, French black metal band uh, this is uh, Inda with the rebirth of I um, and I hate to use the word cold, but this is exactly what it is, man. Especially with the sample. It's got a lot of samples of, like, wind and crows and wolves. And it just kind of pops up in between and sometimes during the songs. And it just kind of really puts you in a fucking uh, fucked up vibe. Of, like, what I liken it to is being lost out in the woods on a fucking, like, in the middle of winter. And having no idea where you are. And just kind of wandering around, you know. You've got all the fear of, um... You know, being hunted by some fucking animals. Um, it's just the loneliness, the starvation, the cold nights. Uh, it's a very disturbing album for sure. And it's uh, really executed to perfection. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's paced really well too. Uh, it's got a lot of like savage attacking parts. Uh, but then it'll like it'll ease off a little bit. You know, give you a chance to breathe and process. Um, and it, before you know, it kicks into the fucking next part. Um, but what I really fucking dig about it, it's just the amazing songwriting on here. Um, just very well structured uh, with the songs and just fantastic musicianship. Uh, some very cool shit. This one came out, I believe this is their um, uh, 2015 full length. This is on uh, Obscure, what was it? Uh, Obscure Abhorrent. And uh, I think Dread Records put out the tape version. Um, but yeah, man, I would definitely highly recommend this. And uh, they do have several others. Uh, in terms of like demos and I guess splits and stuff that's out there but the full links are where I go and uh, this one is no fucking exception uh, so I'm going to have to go back and at least get their first and third release this is some awesome fucking shit man um, just some really cold raw uh, sinister sounding black metal man um, if you like anything like that you will totally dig this I fucking guarantee it that's uh, end of the rebirth of I alright man so that's all I got for you um yeah, I'm definitely trying to cut down on the uh, length of some of these videos. have been fucking well over 20 minutes. Uh, next time I'm going to do uh, some records. I've got three at least to show. And uh, I want to get those done because, again, I've had all those for at least a month by now. And, uh, yeah, man, we're going to start cranking some of these out. Man, i got all kinds of releases to show you that I just got in. And some shit that I'm, it's been an embarrassing long time that they've been out that I've not picked them up. So uh yeah man that's all i got uh i really appreciate you guys watching you can uh follow me on facebook and instagram if you want to do that um links in the description for all these bands subscribe if you want there'll be a link for that thank you so much for watching keep supporting extreme fucking metal